Oh God, why did I make this so heavy? Oh, God. All right, and ah, weighs nothing at all. Definitely doesn't weigh 40 pounds. All right, so if you've ever wanted to make your very own companion cube, but didn't know where to start, well, here's how I built mine. And this isn't a tutorial, it's a warning. Because spoiler, it's way weirder and more difficult than it looks at first glance. But you know what isn't weirder and difficult? This totally seamless and definitely not last minute segue to today's sponsor. And now I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Mecarina. There are a lot of shooters out there, but this one is something special. Mecarina is a 5v5 mech shooter with slick design and a lot of awesome features. It's modern, it runs smoothly, and looks good on almost any device. You can play and compete with your friends, and most importantly, it has giant robots. That's right, there are tons of awesome mechs, each with unique abilities and different play styles, huge varieties of weapons to unlock and upgrade, hundreds of amazing skins and custom paint jobs, and unlimited weapon combinations. You can use any mech to fit your play style and match your personality. And there are loads of game modes, control point capture, 5v5 and 2v2 deathmatch, tournaments, and more. You can play solo or play with your friends against teams of other players from around the world. And now you can use Neymar Jr., one of the most powerful pilots in the game. He massively boosts your damage from missile and assault weapons, and you can get him for free. And here's how. Just play Mech Arena on seven different days between now and December 18th, and he's yours. It's super easy to do, and trust me, you don't want to miss out on this. Mech Arena's getting big, and it's completely free to play on Android and iOS right now. So you can use my personal link to get a free starter pack worth $30, which includes a skin, one amateur crate, and 5,000 credits to help kickstart your game. I'll see you in Mech Arena. Step one was building the chassis. For this, I cut down 12 pieces of angle aluminum to size, marked them with a 3D printed template, and drilled out all 96 holes. I also painted the aluminum dark gray to match the in-game texture. These make up the core edges of the cube, but for the vertices, I needed some special 3D printed corner blocks. Each corner block also has a recessed square nut, which provides a stronger thread for an eye bolt, the purpose of which I'll explain later. Assembly of the chassis wasn't too hard, but after an hour of screwing around, I had myself a sturdy frame that was reasonably lightweight, but then I needed to make the side panels. Each face of the cube consists of a stack of four key elements. There's the inner retaining ring, the window pieces, the face plates, and the outer retaining ring. But let's talk about the windows first. The windows needed to be tough, but also allow plenty of light through. So I made them out of five millimeter thick polycarbonate. I machined six windows with the hole in the middle for accessing the interior of the cube. Thankfully, the game model also has little black pips in the design, which I interpreted as screw holes. So I can also easily mount the heart symbol plates from within to those windows. Now the polycarbonate is naturally transparent, so I sanded them down to provide some diffusion. It would have been better if I could sandblast them, but an orbital sander did a decent enough job. I also split the little side strips into separate parts and machined those out of polycarbonate too. To hold everything in place, I then made a 3D printed frame which retains the four side strips and the window itself from within the cube. Tolerances were a little tight, so if we just gently nudge them with the mallet, they fit great. Now there's a height difference between the side strips and the main window, and that's where the face plates will rest. Those face plates are split into four identical quarters, which are laser cut aluminum sheets painted gray. These have matching holes that line up with the chassis and include mounting holes for the inner window pieces. And although the face plates will be attached to everything later, I actually found out it was a lot easier to mount them to the chassis first and then awkwardly attach all the ring pieces and windows later. Once I had some of the faceplate assemblies completed, I could begin attaching the edge bumpers. These are pretty simple 3D prints that just have some inner mounting holes, since they need to be attached from within the cube. There's plenty of clearance for my arm through the center of the cube to screw them in from behind, which is awkward, but serviceable.
But I actually did learn something, and it was a lot of fun, even if I totally wasted $100 in materials. But thankfully, I have some amazing supporters over on Patreon, including Adam759 and Kynan Macaulay. Thank you guys so much, and thank you to everyone who supports me. I really appreciate it. Your support makes making risks like this uh, less risky. So instead of more molding and casting, where I wasn't sure it was going to work, I decided just to machine the parts out of styrene, which is already white, which meant that I just needed to mask and paint the hearts, and then I had some beautiful, simple heart logos that cost like 10 bucks and look fine. Hmm. Mm. Even though this part comes later in the video, I actually made the corner bumpers first because I knew that it would take a painfully long time to make because they took over a day to print each. So a full week of printing later, I had six corners that needed sanding and painting. And I'm sparing you the footage, but it took so long to sand, fill, prime, sand, fill, prime, and paint the corners to get them to a halfway decent finish. But uh, I'm happy with how they turned out. I also added heat set inserts to each one for easy mounting later on, as these screw in from each of the chassis corner blocks via a long bolt. Now, designing the mechanical structure of the cube wasn't too hard. I mean, it is mostly just a cube after all, but I still needed to figure out a way to evenly light all six sides. Not as easy as it sounds. I planned to have the cube battery powered, so for this I went with LEDs. 864 LEDs to be exact, because there's no kill like overkill, and I went with six meters of LEDs, each meter containing 144 addressable RGB WW LEDs. I went with these because I need to have pink and also yellow, but combining red and green with light never looks right, so it's always best to have the real thing. Now, in order to evenly space out the light to all six sides, I mounted them to what I call the light core. The light core consists of six 3D printed beveled plates that are tied together as a cube. Conveniently, at this full companion cube scale, a meter of LEDs neatly wraps around a circumference just slightly larger than the windows. With the LEDs facing inwards, I avoid hot spots since there's only a couple inches between the lights and the inner walls. But I still need to suspend the light core dead center in the cube. Now, that's where the eye bolts come in. This way, I can tension the light core in the middle of the chassis with zip ties and center them directly on the windows. I could use something more permanent like steel wire, but this is sturdy, easily adjustable, and cheap. But there's also still the issue of powering all these LEDs. Now each pixel, so to speak, is really four LEDs, which means there are actually 3,456 individual LEDs. And if each one were to draw just 20 milliamps, that's 69 amps, nice, which is way too much power for the LED strips. So thankfully, I don't need to run them at full brightness. I really just need two color channels and getting pink and yellow shouldn't be too hard. And I also need to tone down the current. <sighs> now, I really did want this companion cube to be battery powered, at least for a little while. So I designed it to use this beefy 6L lithium polymer battery paired with this 200 watt 5 volt DC-DC converter. But after some tests with a fully charged battery, after a few minutes, this happened. It's not programmed to blink, it's just programmed to glow solid white at 20% brightness on one color channel. Something was wrong. All right, so as you can see, this battery is clearly dead. Uh, I didn't draw that face on there. That's what happens when you over-discharge a LiPo. <sighs> I don't know what's going on, but it's just another 60, what's another $65 down the drain? <laughs> <laughs> so that means I need another solution for powering this, and since I don't want to drop another $70 on a battery that still won't actually last for very long, I decided to switch to AC power. With this setup right here, this is a 150 watt uh, 5 volt DC power supply, and I just mounted it to a power entry module so I can plug it in via this logo plate on one of the side plates, which means this won't be portable, but I'm not really going to carry it around anyway. So it will last forever, hopefully. All right, let's go finish this and plug everything in. The Enrichment Center reminds you that the weighted companion cube will never threaten to stab you and, in fact, cannot speak. In the event that the weighted companion cube does speak, 
The Enrichment Center urges you to disregard its advice. Okay, so before all you Philip J. Fry's start throwing your money at the screen asking if you can buy this, uh, drum roll, uh, this cost close to 1,000 US dollars to develop. So yeah, and that's just in materials, that doesn't include labor. But let's do an actual breakdown of materials because I was surprised at the price and uh, I definitely need to do a lot more projects with this cube to justify the irrational amount of money I spent on it. All right, so we've got $200 for the polycarbonate sheet, $190 for the laser cut aluminum, $100 for the 3D filament, $100 for the LEDs, $100 for the battery and regulator, $100 for the molding materials, $60 for the microcontroller fuses and power supply unit, $60 for the spray paint, $30 for hardware, $20 for body filler, and $20 for miscellaneous sandpaper, wire, and connectors. So that comes in at $980. Now, of course, that includes all the things that I screwed up, like my original uh, battery-powered power supply or the molding materials. So if you were to make your own, hopefully you wouldn't make the same mistakes as me. Plus, I made this out of aluminum and polycarbonate, so it's like super durable and you wouldn't have to do that. But if I just made this out of MDF, I wouldn't have learned anything. So I did learn something and now I've got this big beautiful cube to glow in my shop or wherever I put it forever and I love it. I and mean, you can't buy it from me. But all my files are free because that's what I do here on this channel. And I definitely think there's still a lot more I can do with this. One, I think it would make an awesome computer case mod, but uh, you tell me, what, uh, what weird or fun ideas do you have for the companion cube? There's a lot of empty space in there, and I, there's, you know, there's room for activities. So let me know what you would want to do with a companion cube, and maybe I will do that mod in the future. Thanks for watching. I'm so tired. See you next time. I think I'm gonna need a bigger button. Oh yeah.